Hi, welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. I'm Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. And I'm Chelsea Stratton from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And this episode is airing on Monday, October 11th. It's actually a fun episode. We have a, a Pat Sloan is our special guest today. Yay! Yes, <laughs> we're super excited. I actually taped this interview with Pat a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Chelsea wasn't able to be there for that. She had a sick little little girl that she had to be <laughs> home with that morning. So uh, it, it's just Pat and I, Pat and me for the interview. And uh, I actually jump in a few times. Yes, I think. Oh, that's right. Really? You do jump in actually quite a bit. I re- remember. Yeah, so. I had some questions for her about you know, because she's a computer person. She was yeah. early on with that. We found, or I found out, and so she's really into the technology and does all her vid- video editing herself and everything. So I had some questions too. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was good. You know, sometimes just like we f- found out already with Vanessa Gertzen and with Stacey Asu, uh, sometimes you think you know someone's story, but when you actually get them to come on and talk about it, you learn even more. Yeah, and that's the case with Pat. I I thought I knew more about her background, and I I learned a lot, and it, it was just a a great conversation and. Pat was highly requested in your comments, so uh, we've been trying to go through those comments and reach out to some of those people that you've requested. So do you want to share your quilts? Sure, yes. Uh, the quilts on the wall today, on, uh, on the wall is Fall Dash, and this is a quilt that was originally published in um, American Patchwork and Quilting in their... Uh, magazine two I feel like maybe it's even been two years yeah, ago I was gonna say yeah so it was the cover quilt it's for so that issue cute. and oh I love this one I made it I often get questioned uh, people want to make use the same fabrics but mm-hmm. a lot of these fabrics are really old from some really really early fig tree collections that are probably hard to find now I I yeah. used my stash And I just went super, super scrappy. I did see a recent version of this with some of the newer fall collections that are out and just beautiful. So uh, it's gorgeous. It's a a great quilt. But yeah, we have the pattern in paper and PDF. And then on the table, I decided to stick with fig tree fabrics for today. Yeah, it's a nice quilt. Yeah. So this is my Dream In quilt, which you've probably seen more recently in Seashore Drive fabrics. But this is actually the original version that I made with the farmhouse collection by fig tree and so I thought it would it's so pretty give us a fall look for today yeah okay so that's it for the quilts and now we'll just jump into the interview with Pat Okay, everyone, I am here today with Pat Sloan, and I am so excited that she uh, agreed to come on our podcast. As you know, we did a call out for all of you and asked for suggestions, and Pat came highly recommended, and I had her on my (laughs) list anyway, so welcome, Pat. Oh, thank you. Hi, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) We are so glad to have you here, and uh, I feel like... I'm the newbie here because you have so much experience with podcasting and quilt everything, every aspect. So we're we're just excited oh. to learn from you today. Oh well, you do a fabulous job, you and and Chelsea. Um, you know, I love watching your shows. It's it's great, and you do great quilt shows. You have such fabulous quilts, Sherry. <laughs> oh, thank you, Pat. Uh, So, yeah, I feel like every time we have a guest, we kind of ask them to share their their quilting life journey, uh, where they started and how they got to where they are. And then after that, we have so many other fun things to talk about with you. So, yeah, maybe if if you could just get started and kind of give every for anyone that doesn't know your background and and your story. (laughs) Happy happy to do that. I, I was not born a quilter. There's no quilters in my family. 
Um, and I'd never even heard of the quilt until I met my future husband, whose grandmother had these, you know, blankets that they called quilts. And so that was the first time I'd ever heard or seen a quilt. Um, my first uh, career, so this is, my quilting is my second career. My first career is in, was in computer science. I have a degree in computer science. And I spent 20 years as a, basically what you would call now a software engineer and okay. project manager. So that was my, I'm a geek. Uh-huh. <laughs> helpful, though, the way quilting has gone. <laughs> yes, it's very helpful. And I like technology and I like new things. I love the Internet. And so all of that, you know, I think because I have a technical background, that's none of that scary and all of that's interesting. Um, do I use all of that on my sewing machine? No. <laughs> <laughs> One right. place I don't use it. I don't use it on the sewing machine. Um, but I learned to quilt by a lady who was part of my, my team, my staff at, at my computer job. She told me one day, she says, you need to learn to quilt. And I said, I don't think so. <laughs> I, like, I, I had made one quilt, you know, that said spread from my bed way back when. And I said, you know, I'm not going to cut all those little things up and put them back together. And she goes, oh, no, you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that it was a friend that got you into that I feel like that's how so many quilters you know come come into the quilting world is through a friend yeah yeah somebody who sees you know who is I think enjoying it themselves and feel like they know you well enough that you will also enjoy it but you don't know anything about it so here let's get you let's get you started right (laughs) (laughs) we had to learn at back in the day which was probably about 30 years ago now um, you could only learn to quilt in my area if you wanted to take a class. You, know, you could learn to quilt any way you wanted. But if you wanted to take a class, they only did it by hand. Oh, so wow. all beginner classes were cardboard templates, you know, scissors, uh, even though, you know, and, and stitch by hand. So right. we had a piece by hand. Um, and that was, I mean, I didn't think anything about it, really. I was like, oh, okay, that's how you learn. Because I've learned so many craft sherry that, it didn't, it, that, you know, I learned to do stained glass. I mean, you just do whatever they're teaching you. So it's like, okay, that's how you learn. Right. Um, but, but we did have a sewing machine. They were in, so um, I quickly moved to the sewing machine after learning the basics. Wow, that's, that's great. I and think learning the basics is pretty cool. Did you learn by doing, by stitching by hand? Did you do hand piecing? No, I never did hand piecing. I feel like... Wow. Uh, you know, my grandmother, she did some, but I think by the time I was interested in it, the rotary cutters were already uh, yeah. out there. I, All the rage. <laughs> yeah, they were the rage. So uh, she, I feel like uh, I used to demonstrate that. I used to work at Joanne's when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. or cloth, It was called Cloth World back then. But, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I used to demonstrate these rotary cutters. They had just come out and... I used to demonstrate them at the cash register. I had no idea that would one day, (laughs) you know, I'd be using that tool on a daily basis, but. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy stuff. So. You know, when you, when you piece by hand, you do learn a lot about construction. Yes. Which is useful for everything. Right. Yeah. I almost feel like I want to start doing some of that now. Uh, I I really love English paper piecing with the, grandmother's flower garden blocks and Mm -hmm. so I think I would enjoy it so you probably would if you like any kind of handwork you get a rhythm it gets fast so there you go your new project yes (laughs) Yes. okay so how did you go then from you know taking a class and making a quilt to becoming you you know a a quilter and, and that becoming your your second career you know, I always wanted to work for myself. It just took me a long time to figure out what that business would be. And so that's what happened with quilt making is that I um, I worked in the software, you know, all that time. And then, you know, I start, when I started quilting, I started looking at it from the business side of it. You know, what could I do in this industry that I could make it a career? You know, that I could actually leave computers, which is makes decent money, really right. decent money, uh, to something else. And 
so that's that's kind of what happened is I liked it enough that I felt, you know, and then I started loving it, just like becoming more like it was a passion. It was something that I could never see me not doing. And I've done a lot of crap. So I knew that this was a very big shift in my feeling for this, for working with uh, clothes and fabric. Um, Cause I've always loved fabric. Fabric has been my number one sort of product. Um, it was just finding the right thing to make it into. And it's not clothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> you could tell I'm not a clothing designer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I sewed a lot of clothing when I was in high school. Uh, but yeah, once I found quilting, then clothing didn't even really interest me that much anymore. Mm-hmm. It, it was easy to turn my back on that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I sewed clothing badly, so I oh. did it, but yeah, it was bad, yeah. <laughs> but quilts are a lot easier. They don't have to fit you. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. Well, uh, you are doing so much these days. I still, I, we talked a little bit uh, before we started the interview, just kind of when I first called about, you actually had the first quilting podcast out there, and... Uh, maybe you could just tell our listeners a little bit about that too, because yeah, the, my my yeah, that was um, such such an interesting thing to have happen. Um, about it was about twelve years ago now. I was I was just got an email. I literally I got an email and it said from a lady I didn't know, sort of. Uh-huh. <laughs> she was like, she did web work. She's a culture and she did web work, and she was like, I have this customer. And she wants to start an all-woman uh, internet radio station. And I told her that she needed to have a quilter on as one of the um, you know hosts for her internet radio station. And she was a children's book author, this person. And uh, so the lady who emailed me said that I, I wanted to find out if you would be interested. Uh, and if you are, then they'll contact you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm like, okay, well, that sounds like fun. I, I don't even know what that is, um, internet radio. I didn't listen to it. Uh, I had no clue. So they they contacted me, and eventually um, the the man who ran the internet radio station, he says, well, I want to interview you. And one, of the, one of the questions he asked me is, do you think you can talk about quotes for an hour? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there won't be any problem. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's that's not the problem. Right. <laughs> <There's no> problem. <laughs> there might be other problems, but that's not one of them. <laughs> right. Yeah. So they they didn't pay me, uh, so I had to do it for free oh. um, because it was kind of this startup, and the lady eventually uh, decided not to run this. But I liked what I was doing, and the man who owned the radio station liked what I was doing, and. So he let me run it um, basically for a few, you know, for a few months there. Um, well, I didn't have to pay for anything because you had to pay for the channel. You know, it was a different time. It isn't like today where it's easier. Right. Um, so then eventually I partnered with American Petrol and Quilting Magazine. Um, I had been running mine for about four years and uh, I knew the editors and everybody there at the magazine and we started talking and they uh, asked if I would join them. And so I ran for 10, for the rest of the time of the 10 years, I ran the podcast for the magazine. So I was their um, podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I guess I didn't realize that you had it for several years before you joined up with them. So yeah, That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It, it was a lot of work. For <laughs> yeah. But it was fun. Yeah. You get to meet, you get to meet so many people and hear, about, like you said, about their quilting journeys, that's the most fun. Right. Yeah. And uh, wow, that I, I just love this. And so when, did, I feel like you moved to YouTube sometime, I don't know, before we did, I guess. Well, I, mm-hmm. yeah. So what made you decide, I, I, I love the daily YouTubes that you do. Yeah. And I know that you're listening. Daily YouTube. Yeah. How how do you make time for that? How and how did that come about? Maybe yeah. Yeah, I've been actually on YouTube sporadically, uh-huh. very sporadically since almost since it started. So about a couple months after YouTube started, I did my first YouTube. 
but um, you know, I had a whole different life and business and YouTube wasn't the same kind of business tool that it is now. So I had done sporadically. Then I would go long periods of time where like I was on the road teaching or whatever, so I couldn't, you know, really do the videos. Um, but Around the time that my podcast ended, I had already started doing sort of weekly videos. And so I was keeping weekly or maybe twice a week, I would set up another one, you know, and I was doing that. And then when COVID hit in March of 2020, that's when I decided, I think I'm going to do a daily video while this is happening. Right. (laughs) I thought, you know. I just, you know, life has just totally gone upside down for everybody. And I think I'm going to do a daily video and see how that goes. And um, that's that's what I did. I thought, this is crazy that people are going to just, like, stop watching me or they'll find it fun. And enough of people seem to find it fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I feel like, you know, that's when we, like you, we had the YouTube for several years, but we didn't do anything and then when everything shut down in March, Billy actually said, Mom, we need to film some videos. <laughs> and yeah. I, I just feel like it's been a lifeline for a lot of people to have, you know, mm-hmm. I'm sure you, just like me, have received emails from people who were completely isolated during this mm-hmm. time. And and so you're, what a blessing for you to give them those daily videos. I, I just think they must be so appreciative. I do, I do get of some really, really nice emails and people who, it's sort of like, I think of it like for people who watch the, the morning news, like they have an anchor or a morning talk show person that they listen to for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes every morning. I've sort of become the quote version of that yes. <laughs> for, for people who know about me. But <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's awesome. I, th- I think it's, it's so wonderful that that you did that and and are continuing it now that things are even opening up so right right it's i enjoy it too i have to balance it you know like not everything is a deep dive tutorial by any means it's very light a lot of it there's that very light conversation about quilting it's about the things going on uh, so it's like you know 10 or 15 you know it's usually about 12 to 15 minutes right so it's not real long yeah. And and do you tape them in the morning or the afternoon or or different will, times like, or <laughs> I I you I tape the day before generally uh-huh. and uh generally I try to tape in the morning but sometimes I ha- I tape in the afternoon. So it yeah. just depends. But if I tape in the morning then I have the afternoon and evening free like you know it's not chopped up in the middle with taping and video editing and things cuz I do all the editing too. So right. I do everything. Oh, I can't even imagine. see I'm so blessed to have Billy do all the <laughs> editing for us. I can't (laughs) even imagine. Uh, I know all of your listeners and viewers know about your wrists. (laughs) And I I just have to say when I, I feel like I saw it first on Instagram, I feel like you posted a picture. And Mm -hmm. my heart just sank because I was just like, it hit me hard. Like, what would I do if that happened to me? I know. (sighs) And yeah, I in in June of 2020, so I was taking an afternoon walk on Saturday, and I tripped on a lifted up sidewalk section, oh. and and broke both of my wrists and oh. some other other bones in there. So they were not like it was not too badly, you know, like not crushed, but they were multiple breaks. Right. And so I was down and out instantly. You know, it was like whoa, <laughs> and you can't use your hands. <laughs> Um, it life, there's a lot in life you can't do very well yourself. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, oh, it I, was hard. And, and I, people say to me, they're like, well, why do you still do the videos? And it's like, well, I, it gave me control over something. I mean, I didn't have a lot of control. You know, there was a lot of things I could no longer do. My husband had to do a lot of things for me. Right. Um, you know, think eating, you know, wash my hair. Right. All the hygiene things you can imagine, none of those could I do. Um, so it was very scary. And um, I thought, well, I'm just going to keep doing the videos because I it's a routine. It was something I could do. They weren't very long. I had control. Like, okay, there's one thing in my life I can control. I can't control my wrists are broken. 
I can't make them heal faster, right. but I can do this. So, yeah. <laughs> and wow. so, well. Yeah, I remember after the Instagram post, I remember watching the the first YouTube video that you did about that. And I, I was just like, oh, and you seem so positive about it. So yeah. <laughs> that was my takeaway also. And all the well, surgeries and yeah. Yeah. Luckily, I just had to have one surgery. That was the good part. So luckily, they could do everything. She did everything at once, my surgeon. Like, oh, I was like, okay, we're doing it all. Like, uh-huh. boom, like everything. And I'm like, I had even had carpal tunnel surgery done. So oh. everything. So so I had all these things done, which made it a lot, I think, a lot harder to recover from. Right. It, you know, it took long, took long time. Yeah. So, and, oh. But it's pretty good now. It's uh, <laughs> like, not, like a year and, you know, four months or whatever. My left hand is still not 100%, but I'm working with a specialty doctor with exercises, and hopefully we can get it. We've gotten it much, much better just since, since the spring, um, but I can do all my quilting. I can cut all my stuff. Um, it's just the fingers don't bend as well, and the wrist doesn't bend as well. So. Oh. I'm, I'm oh. sure that that was... Um you continuing doing those videos and showing everything that you were working on had to be and and like you said in the middle right in the middle of the pandemic i'm sure it was inspirational for a lot of people to all right well if she's still doing it then then i can right. i can get something done too so i'm sure you <laughs> served as like a as an inspiration for a lot of people during that time too even though it was a negative experience probably overall at least you, you turned it into a positive you know, Billy, I tried to do that. You know, it's sort of like, well, I can't, I can't go back in time. Mm-hmm. There's just no way. I bought a sign. I bought it off of Etsy from somebody. It says, we can do hard things. Um, and I still have it here in my studio. And I, I used that a lot at one point because it's like, and you know, all of everybody had to do hard things when the pandemic first hit. And I had, I felt like, okay, well, you know, I have to do these extra hard, you know, extra amount of hard things with my wrist, but we can all do it. Uh, there's really no choice. You can't go back. <laughs> so, right. like this. yeah, no, I, I just, it's, it is a great inspiration to me. I just, cause I, and that's what I saw. I saw you keep working, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I know that- I had really great friends who I had so alongs, all these so alongs going on. And so basically I was packing up stuff and they were coming, like I have local friends that were, who came and got them. And I had friends I mailed that we mailed stuff to that made blocks and mailed them back. Um, so I got, uh, it takes a village, right? Yes. And yeah, it really does. You, you ask, you know, your, your friends come and say, what can I do? And I'm like, good, you can sew. I can't, but you right. can. So. Right. <laughs> And that was that was really helpful. It was it then made it also so that I could continue to run my business rather right. than having to shut everything down for because I probably had four to five months where it it was very difficult to do anything. Oh yeah, wow. And then uh, what about your Facebook community? Did that start during the pandemic too, or? No, I've had that for, for a while. Okay. Um, I've had that about six years, that particular community. Um, I've always had an internet community uh, since I started my business. They just I just had to move platforms. Right. Because <laughs> there were Yahoo groups, and then, like, I had my own forum that I ran. Uh, then people were in Flickr groups. Um, and then eventually I, I was on Facebook for, for quite a while before I the groups became sort of viable things there. Right. And so I started mine maybe it was six or seven years ago. Okay. And how often do you inter I feel like I do a terrible job with Facebook, but how often oh. do you interact there? Is that a daily or all weekly? day long? Really? All wow. day long. Every day. Every day, all day long. Uh huh. Yeah. I go in oh probably a dozen times a day and interact on my in my Facebook community. Wow. Um, with people sharing things and, you know, make comments or like them or, you know, right. answer questions because people have questions. So the community answers questions too because there's like, you know, 200,000 of them and there's only one of me. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. They help each other. That's what I was looking at. How can you keep up with that many? You know, it would just be overwhelming to yeah, you, you just have a balance. You, yeah. know, you just have to. And people know that, you know, the group is large and that I can't answer all of their questions. But, you know, even if they call out my name on the question, I may not see it, you know, or get right. to it before 10 other people have already answered them. So right. everybody's good with that. Yeah. Yeah. I have noticed that in ours too. The The other members of the group are really good to respond mm-hmm. to other people's questions. That, I, I feel like as quilters, that's what we do, right? We, right. We help each yeah. other. Yeah, totally, totally. Because that, and people like to help. Yeah. That's, you know, so giving other people a chance to shine. Um, you know, you shine your light on them and let them say, hey, I know the answer. So great. You you can help another person and that person in turn can help somebody else. Right. So. And I'm oh, sure. Love. Oh, <laughs> yes. <yeah>. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure with you having, you know, deep roots with like you mentioned earlier with your technology background and, and Internet, you've probably seen the online community grow. And now it's, you know, especially with Facebook, I think. I would imagine Facebook is probably the best platform for quilters to use in in that in that way because so many people are on it, and especially so many people in the quilting community. Um, it, you've probably seen that evolve from you know ten, twelve, fifteen years ago until now. I'm, I'm guessing. I'd imagine you could speak to it though that it's it's probably the best it's ever been. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I have watched people say to me at an event, I don't do email, you know, I don't ever read a website, to what's your Facebook page, you know, like, and and going into Joanne's fabric and having the Joanne's person say, oh, you're new to quilting, go join Pat's Facebook page. Um, It it is just an absolute um, phenomenal place for makers. Uh, no matter what kind of makers, there's, you know, all kinds out there. But uh, Facebook is, the, the community part of it is so strong um, and so vibrant. You can, like, unlike other platforms, let's say, compared to Instagram, unlike Instagram, if somebody leaves me a comment, and I, I can't say, like, hey, show me your version of this hexi quilt. They can't show me right. in Instagram. But on Facebook, I can have hundreds of pictures of people sharing under one post and then people and people constantly come in there and say, Hey, I want to do a baby quilt for a little boy. Show me your baby, you know, baby boy quilt. And then you'll see all these, you know, total inspiration. It's just a different platform. It's a different, a different way of sharing. It's a lot more like maybe being in a guild in person where, you know, people can show you something, a picture on their phone. Uh, in person, you can do like Facebook, you can show the picture off your phone. Right. Whereas Instagram is more just like sending information out. It doesn't have the interactive part there. Right. Yeah. And with the changes coming to Instagram, you know, I, I feel like it's probably going to move quilters even more to Facebook and YouTube, really. Right. Uh, YouTube is, I wish you could share pictures on YouTube. That would be awesome as well. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody's listening here like, yes, but, but we can't. We yeah. have to come over to Facebook to do that part. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. But there, but there are more quilters. I think Billy is like, like expanding just a touch. The amount of people who are on the internet now compared to like 15 years ago is so crazy. Yeah, like, that's even true. Compared to, even compared to like Five years ago. Yes. Um, even since five years, in the past five years, it has just expanded so much. And people with the pandemic who never thought that they maybe they didn't have time, their lives couldn't fit it in, coming to listen to YouTube, coming to listen to podcasts, coming to watch something, going into Facebook or Instagram, they just didn't feel they had time. Well, now they had time and they could explore it and understand what it was about and learn about it. So it gave people the ability to learn something new that that many of them have found um, interesting and they want to stay with it. Yeah, that's what I've seen too. It, uh, you know, I mean, the pandemic there there were blessings that came out of it, and I I think mm-hmm. just like you said, people it gave people the opportunity to explore all of these different things. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I've seen lots of women write in and they hadn't sewn in decades and 
And because yeah. of the pandemic, right. they started sewing again. Right, right. Yeah, it's been, that's been awesome. You know, and then you hope, I mean, people will find those things that filled their lives before will come back. Right. And so then they'll balance. But hopefully they saw enough, you know, at least from our standpoint, Jerry, you know, they saw enough of coming to watch our videos or doing our sew-alongs that, that it's fun and enjoyable and maybe they can fit a little bit of that into their lives going forward. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so alongs, I think kind of, we just can move right into that because oh. I think people, <laughs> you mentioned all the sewing longs that you had going on when you uh, had your broken wrists. Uh, yeah. And I found uh, people love sew alongs. So mm -hmm. uh, and new people are finding out about them. I just ran one. I just finished one. Mm -hmm. um, and I had so many people say, this was my first sew along. Yes. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm glad you finally did one. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that recently, too. Uh, and I know you, like me, we've both done Fat Quarter Shop sew-alongs uh, mm -hmm. together. But I know mm -hmm. you have multiple ones going on that are your own, right? So mm -hmm. throughout the year. Yeah, I do. do I you, do a lot of them right now at once because I have a pretty large community. So, you know, what doesn't one thing won't speak to everybody. So, I mean, that won't go on forever. But for right now, it, you know, I can run about five or six at a time, which is a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not everybody. I don't expect people to do them all. They'll do the ones that interest them. Right. Uh, and then I do them all. <laughs> right. And and do you do weekly for each of them, or, or some of them monthly, um, or? I I used to do more monthly, but now most of them are weekly. Yeah. I just find that people lose interest on the monthly. Yeah. It's just so long, um, especially if it's just one block. Right. You know. Yeah, I've seen so, that too. Uh, yeah. The, this all the trimmings. So long. Well, I guess by the time this airs, it'll be over. But with Fat Quarter Shop, I think weekly is the only way they could have done that. So, oh. I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, I think weekly is just a lot of fun for people because it no, it's especially the the what you're doing isn't a lot of work. So there's a key point there. If you get too much into the week, people get overloaded. They can't complete it, and then that's a negative. So, right. It's just finding the balance. Be how difficult right. the blocks are, or the rows, mm -hmm. or. Yeah. Uh, when this airs, let's see, Billy, this will be airing what? The first? Um, October 11th. October yeah. 11th. So what what uh, sew-alongs do you have coming up then that you might want to tell everyone about? Huh. Well, I have, I do what I call a block Wednesday, which is a simple piece block. And I have one uh, that'll be, it's called, uh, called um, Fall Frolic. And so that's a, a block a week. And it's a simple one. So that's a really fun one if people haven't ever done any. Um, I'm doing a so long from my book from the holiday celebration. So I'm take I did a asymmetrical layout and it's called Happy Everything. You know, like all the holidays, Sherry, like Happy Everything, like oh, Happy right. Birthday, Happy Valentine's Day. Um, so taking blocks from the book and and doing that. I'm doing a wreath quilt, uh, which is a pattern by Dev McCulloch um, of Flamingo Toes, which uses a jelly roll and. Um, I think there's one other one. Wow. <laughs> oh, there's. <laughs> but if you go to my website, um, I have I love to make uh, quilts. Is my so long website, and I actually publish a calendar, and it has all the things going on. So oh, makes it easy. That's awesome, and we will link to all this in our description and everything, so they can find all of your. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, your so long website, everything. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> not that that not that they don't already know how to find all no. of those places, but <laughs> sometimes it is helpful to have a little, uh, yeah, just a, a log where it's all listed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you mentioned holiday celebrations. That's your most recent book, and I believe it's yeah. with Martingale, correct? Yes. 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 Anything you want to say about that? Yeah, I really love holidays. I mean, I like to decorate for them. I like to switch quilts out. I actually did a little video where I switched the quilts out in my living room. Um, and 
you know, to me, the holidays are just sort of quilts are made for holidays. I mean, it's just so easy to make. You don't have to make bed size quilts for holidays. You know, little table runners and pillows, little wall hangings and table mats, you know, anything to sort of bring in. Plus, it's just such cute fabric, Sherry. You know, like, right. you have to sew with it, right? It's like, it's so cute. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, you and I are definitely on the same page there. Uh, yeah. The holidays, <laughs> small projects for holidays. That's probably what really got me so into quilting so quickly, you know, just mm-hmm. um, small projects are easy to finish. You can decorate your home with right. them. Yeah. So yeah. I feel I mean, like. No, nobody wants to make bed quilts all the time. I mean, that's just too much. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh and I feel like we're on the same page also. Uh, you, you mentioned that you're, you know, sorting and documenting your quilts. And uh, I'm, I've been doing that too. I just, in fact, I gave, I sent one home with Chelsea this morning because I just said, I can't keep all of these forever. And uh, so any, any tips you have for me and for our listeners on... Uh, on how you're well, documenting and <laughs> sorting. <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give you a, a look back in time. Like I wish I had done it from the beginning. Uh-huh. So like, it, like, well, I wish I had known what well would look like back in the beginning. I didn't know. I thought I was doing enough. And uh-huh. now that I'm here with almost 800 pieces, uh, you know, quotes, yeah. you know, they're not bed quotes, but everything from table mats to bed quotes. Right. I mean, that's a lot of inventory and I and a lot of quilts and I don't need them all. I can't keep them all. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I haven't used them over the years, a lot of them. But yeah. there are some that will never get reused and so they need to have new homes. But if, you, it, if you've not ever started that and you're sort of collecting, you just need to just start now. Start either, you know, documenting, like I document, you know, when they're made. And I've done all that. The labels are all on them. Oh, you're it's so good to have labels. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, well, you know, every once, in a, every once in a while I find one that I know was in a book or something that I just put the label on and didn't, never got around to writing anything. Uh-huh. But at least I, I, I recognize it. So I'm like, okay, I can write the label now. Um, the labels are important. It's important also for who you give them to. Um, right. People like to have that information. My family flips the quilt over first to see what's there. Right. That's the first thing they do. Like, that's on the label. But for me now, I can only have so many quilts. And most people who are not a business don't have the same issues that you have, that, that I have, and that you probably have, Sherry. It's like, they're not making them for a business. Right. So they're not going to accumulate quite as many. But there are very pro- prolific quilters out there who yes. are creating a lot of quilts um, and a lot of tops. Yes. Yeah. That they never quilt. They don't intend to quilt. Yeah. <laughs> well, in fact, that's the primary reason I started my blog in 2008 was just to document my quilts. You know, yeah. I was giving a lot away and I just wanted some kind of record and that seemed to be the easiest, you know, digital cameras were available then and mm-hmm. it just seemed like the easiest way. But I, as as you know, as I've gotten more into the business side, I've kind of let a lot of that documenting go, and I need to get back with that. Uh, I gave a whole bunch away when we moved. Uh, actually, some of Billy's friends helped us move, and mm-hmm. I had this pile of quilts, and I said, take stuff for your wives or your kids or you. Yeah. <laughs> so, your but, neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's grown since the, I mean, that was two years ago and uh, now I have even more. So, Oh, I know. when it, they, they do, they come about so fast and um, I'm, I'm going through them. It'll probably take me three or four passes till I get down to the number that I want to keep. You know, they're primary, cause there are a handful of quotes that I'll never give away, you know? Right. Yes. They're key to, like, I did a museum exhibit, so I could never have done a museum exhibit of my work if I didn't have them. Right. You know, like, key pieces that tell the story of my of my quilting journey. So there are and things that I really like and things that I decorate with. And then there's the whole, that whole, you know, so when I get down to that, that group, I'll see how many there really are. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm the same way. There are some I just can't get rid of at all right, right now, and... 
but then there are others that I get. And you did send me a, a YouTube link, so uh, mm -hmm. for I'm so I'm guessing we can put that yeah. in the description also for yeah. people. Yeah, to... they want to see all of my quilts piled in my living room. Okay. <laughs> and then I then I took them into my dining room. Oh, oh my goodness! It was like ah. Uh, it was a huge thing, a huge day. And then Greg's like, okay, do we really have to film this? I'm like, yes. We really have to take pictures. And he was like, oh, that's my husband, Greg. Yes. <laughs> oh, so that's what you did. A, you put them all in one space to begin with. Yes. Wow. Yes. I, I didn't take the things off the walls. I probably have like 30 pieces hanging on the walls of my home. Uh -huh. So I did not take anything off the walls. So everything in there is, you know, like they're about close to 800 pieces. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually going to watch that video <laughs> today when we get off the phone. So. And you'll want to go get rid of quilts after you watch it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm hoping it'll inspire me to really right. start working on this myself. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. There's, I'm, I'm working on a book now. And after that, I'll go back to doing another group of them. I'm working locally with a friend who uh, is associated with several different organizations that will take quilts. Like I have one for an auction. Um, we have some that will go to uh, children, you know, different things like that. She also works with a group that whatever they sell at their thrift shop uh, is money that goes for nursing scholarships. And so I'm just really lucky to have my friend Susan here locally who has all these connections. Oh. And so I can just give them to her. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That's a so great. I need to, so you need to find a friend like that. <laughs> help yes, you. that's what I need. I, f I feel like Chelsea, she's a, she's kind of a minimalist. So mm -hmm. she, I, I've thought about having her come over when I start going through them and cause she can say, yeah. keep that, get rid of that. <laughs> yeah. She, she's right. pretty harsh. So <laughs> right. she doesn't have the emotional ties either. <laughs> right. Yeah. The one thing I did find, that one that I think anybody, um, it's like it's, it's one thing to think about when you're trying to reduce the number of quilts you have. You know, whether it's like props, props, or finished quilts. The one thing I'm finding is that I need to be in the right frame of mind, and then I also need to be really sure of what I'm doing. Like sometimes you can get into a little bit of a frenzy of it. You're like, okay, I'm sick of this. You know, I'm going to get rid of this stuff, and you don't want to get rid of something you're sorry that you got rid of. Right. Um, it's kind of like you need a pile of that sort of maybe pile. And just give yourself some grace that, okay, maybe I could have got rid of this on the first pass, but they may not go now to the third pass when I'm, I'm in a great time of mind to really decide, yes, that one will have a new home. Um, because that's the one thing I got a little bit nervous about at one point because I was getting a little bit of a frenzy. I was like, okay, I'm going to get rid of a bunch of these. <laughs> and then I was like, I want to be sure I don't do something I'll regret. Yes. No. Yeah, that is great yeah. advice for for everyone, I feel like, too. I, mm -hmm. I feel like when we, we gave some of those away a couple years ago, there's just one that I mm -hmm. went to look for, and I haven't mm -hmm. been able to find it. And I thought, oh, I must have given that one away. So luckily, I think there's only one I <laughs> messed up on. So uh, I know, I know. It's a, it's a thinking feeling, too. And nobody wants to have that. I mean, it's, and, and it just, it's like when you get into that sort of, High frenzy mode. I think this one, if you recognize it in yourself, that seems like, okay, let's back it down a little bit and just take our time and be sure we've talked through all of this. Yes. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be done today. Right. Time. Right. Yeah. yeah. Very good advice. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I, I guess, you know, we've this has been a great conversation. And oh, it's been so much fun. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm maybe at quilt market and, and a real, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, uh, so are you going to go to Salt Lake? That's, I guess, our next. Uh, I am not. I am not able no. to do that. But yeah. Oh, well. You, you're a lot closer. That's a fairly close one. Right. Too. Yeah. It's a hop in the car for us. So mm -hmm. so maybe yeah. Houston 2022, we'll, we'll get yes. to see each other in person. <laughs> in person again i can't wait <laughs> yes oh well thank you so much pat uh we will have all of the links to everything that we've talked about and also billy will have put up on the screen a lot of different photos that you sent us from 
holiday celebrations and and uh we'll have those up for everyone to look at who's who's listening on youtube so yeah i just thank you so so much thank you thank you for asking me it's so great to meet you billy yes um, same, same same here thank you Josie, I said hi. I will. I will tell her. Yeah, and maybe uh, Billy will probably go to Quilt Market in Houston 2022 also, so yeah. <laughs> can say hi to him in person then. Perfect. That sounds yes. great. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, Pat. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay, so that was our interview with Pat. We hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, and I'm so looking forward to listening to uh, that myself. <laughs> uh, you might have noticed in one part of the interview, we talked about Pat going through her quilts. And we actually have a video link for that from her. And I went ahead and watched it in between <laughs> when I talked with Pat and now. And that was a really fun video. She has a lot of quilts. And to see them all in her dining room was just incredible but it was really motivating to me you might be seeing a picture of all of my quilts in my dining room very very soon <laughs> okay well thanks so much for stopping by 